what I remember. Yep, I'm ready. All right, so uh, back to my story. So with this aircraft that would not run worth a dang and, and it would, you know, this high idle would run way up and down. So the mechanic who did it instantly went for the carburetor and, and rightfully so, that sounds like a fuel problem. So, and as I've told you guys before, one of the worst mistakes you can make when you're trying to troubleshoot something really is to ask somebody who's not involved and their head isn't in the game. And I, I could go on with many, many stories about how something has gotten broken, screwed up, because, you know, um, one mechanic asks another an opinion when the mechanic wasn't involved. So, you know, like, for example, you know, this mechanic was, was he had reached the end of his rope. He had had the carburetor off and on so many times, and he couldn't find anything wrong with it. Nothing wasn't working. And and I'm walking by and he said, hey, what do you think's wrong with it? And I said, well, you know, what it sounds to me like what you're doing is for some strange reason, you're, you're getting this, this sudden influx of air and fuel and it's, and it's dropping the fuel level down in, into the carburetor. And then as the, uh, as the throttle goes back or the engine starts to die off, then fuel starting to come up into the, into the bowl or something like that. And I said, well, I guess, you know, you ought to check and see if uh, you ought to check and see that fuel is going through there correctly. And, you know, he said, well, how do you do that? And I said, well, I don't know. I guess you can use shop air or something. And then I walked away and uh, you know, right there, I wasn't, what I said kind of made sense, but if you really stop and think about the whole thing that the engine was running really fast and then dying off and then the fuel bowl was filling up. Well, you know, in retrospect, that's not the case because he had the idle pull all the way back, but I didn't think about that. So um, it wasn't that he had the throttle wide open allowing fuel to go through. It was getting air and fuel in some other fashion. Uh, around the throttle and, and why it was going fast and dying is, well, that'll come. But um, so the next thing is when I said you should try shop air to make sure the fuel is filling through there, uh, that was a ridiculous thing to say um, for a lot of reasons. But if I go back to my little drawing over here and let's, let's think this through for a minute. So basically what I said to him in passing was short of, well, why don't you disconnect? Oops, I gotta remember, you can't see that. Why don't you disconnect the fuel line over here and put shop air into here and make sure that the air blows through here and through here and down in here and through here and out of there. Now, in theory, that makes sense, right? If air is not flowing through there, then, then fuel isn't and, and you have some sort of problem. Well, so he did that. He disconnected this, hooked up uh, 110 PSI of shop air. So he, and, and of course this, you have to think about the fact that this is not open to the atmosphere. It's got a lid on it with a very tiny little hole up there so you can uh, allow this to equalize pressure. Uh, and so he pressurized this with, with a large volume of shop air and that shop air, no matter where this bowl, this float is, will allow the seat to come up because the air is just going to blow it up. So it did. It blew the seat out of the way, filled this chamber with 110 PSI air, and it allowed a little bit of that air to squeak by here and a little tiny bit of air to go right there. So what did we do to the fuel bowl? Pressurized that fuel bowl to about 108 PSI. And this was a brass float that was meant to float. And let me tell you, I had, <laughs> it, didn't, it didn't run at all after that. Um, we took the top off and it had taken those, those brass floats, which are very thin brass, and, and completely collapsed them to something that was paper thin. And uh, anyway, don't check with shop air. It'll ruin the floats. So i tell you that story to tell you that story. All right, um, where are we here? I'm gonna throw one other thing up in here. Um, we'll make this, I don't know, where was I? Who knows where I was? One behind, so V, V, I think it was I, I. We'll go with that. Uh, fuel strainer. Uh, 
Well, we, these carburetors need a fuel strainer because as this fuel is coming down in through the fuel tank, it could get little tiny bits of debris, shop rags, bugs, all kinds of stuff. There are fuel strainers up here in the fuel tank, but you also want, and they're pretty fat. Uh, they're really meant to kind of uh, filter out things with a part number written on there, washers and nuts and screws. And by the time you get down here, you don't really want something like that. So down here in this area, there is a finger st a strainer that strains out anything that's coming into the carburetor. So there is a fuel strainer on the inlet side. So a fuel strainer. That is found on the inlet, uh, the fuel inlet into the carb found on the fuel uh, inlet to the carb. Go into the carb. Uh, check. You should always check them, and I will ask you this during your orals. Check each annual. So you're going to check it at least once a year and every 100 hours. Don't say every 100 hours and don't say every annual. Say every 100 hours and every annual and every 100 hours. And what that's saying is if I flew my airplane 200 hours a year, it would get checked twice at each 100 hour inspection. Most people only fly their airplane you know, like me, my airplane gets maybe 25 to 50 hours every year. So I want to make sure I check it at least every year at the same spot. And in addition, I would check it every time I get to 100 hours. So uh, an annual inspection and a 100 hour inspection are the same sheets. They tell you to do the same thing. But remember, an annual inspection is done once a year. And 100 hour is done on aircraft for hire every 100 hours. So like a, an aircraft that is uh, being used for flight instruction, it may get five, six, seven hundred hours every year if it gets flown a lot. Uh, that is a lot. Uh, so you'd want to not check it once a year, but at the annual and those five or six, seven times in there. All right, let's go back to here. So, all right, so we have our carburetor and uh, we're trying to get off our Madagascar island. And so we've come up with all of this and we're ready to test it out. And so uh, we throw somebody in there. We'll let PK do it this time since, since he, PK supplied my, my snack today of peanuts again. And so, uh, so we're going to let him, him do the, take the honors of starting this thing up. So he gets in there and uh, again, we have no way to start this really because there's still not enough air coming through the Venturi to allow enough pressure drop to pull the fuel out. So, but PK knows this because he's a smart guy. So he uses the engine primer and he primes it and boom, this thing starts off. And guess what? It goes to wide open throttle, hits its red line and stays right there. But this time it runs perfectly, uh, but it's at red line and we can do nothing other than that. And that's a horrible thing to happen to an aircraft when it's cold is to go from zero to red line. But that's what we've got. But it does work and it does run quite well at red line. So uh, scares the crap out of PK and the monkeys around because this thing is running at red line. So he shuts it off because he's a smart guy. And uh, we don't like monkey poo on everything. So what do we need to add to this to be able to regulate the throttle, the RPM? Throttle plate. Yep, something to pitch off. There you go. We need a throttle plate. We need some way to regulate that. And so that is not a real difficult thing to do. So we are simply just going to add a throttle plate. And let me see, I got to draw it the right way. Otherwise, it's not going to leave me enough room to do something. So um, I'll go this way. All right, so we add a throttle plate up here. And with this throttle plate, what it's not going to be that close to the Venturi, just the way my drawing is. So as it, uh, this is going to be in the closed or idle position. And let's see, because I can't actually make it move here. And this would be the wide open throttle. So this right here is wide open. So when it is wide open, 
what is the limiting factor for the maximum amount of air that the engine can get? Size of the Venturi. There you go. Size of Venturi. I got at least one guy listening. He's quick on his mic. Very good. So, all right. So, medium eraser. So, but we want it to be over here in the idle position. So, make this over here in the idle position. So, that's fantastic. Is there a position in between closed and open, or is it always either closed or fully open? No. It's all, it's, uh, it varies the entire time. So it's, what do you want? Do you, it's tied directly to the black knob inside of the cockpit in your automobile. It is tied directly to your right foot. And so the more you, uh, push forward on the throttle in the aircraft, oops, I forget, you can't see that. The more you push forward on the, on the, uh, black knob, the wider this is going to open. So right now I've got it almost completely closed which is going to be my idle position. All right, so um, through our ingenious trial and effort here, we managed to throw in a throttle plate, but we wanna see how well this is gonna work. All right, so we jump in the aircraft, and uh, again, we prime it to get it going, and uh, it won't run. It'll run on the primer, and you'll, you'll experience this sometimes in aviation. An aircraft only runs on the primer, which means I give it a shot of prime, I start it, it starts for a second and dies. Give it another shot of prime, starts for a second and dies. All you're doing is running it off the primer. And I explained to you that sometimes you can actually run an engine off the primer for quite a while. Well, for a little while if you're quick enough. What you do is you take the plunger and you pull it all the way back and then push it in and give it that shot of prime. Then you pull the plunger back and you get ready and you hit the starter and as the engine starts, you actually push the primer in just at the right speed to give it the right mixture to keep it running. You'll experience this in lab with our, our little ground power unit because it, it's a little temperamental. Um, so you'll learn to do that. But anyway, so you can run an aircraft off the primer, but as soon as you stop off running it, trying to run it with the primer, the thing dies. Well, why is it dying on us? How come we can't get this to run on the primer? It's not enough air to hold idle. You got it. There is not enough air flowing through here anymore to make any of this work. It's just a little tiny air is coming up and squeaking around the little edge right there and squeaking around the little edge right there. You got nothing. I mean, this is not working out well at all. So what we have to do is we have to create some way for this to actually work. And the way we're going to make it work is we have to create an idle circuit. And when, when I talk to you guys in, in the, uh, with your orals and stuff like that, I will often ask you that. I'll, well, that's one of my questions. What are the two circuits? And the answer is the idle circuit. And I say the off idle circuit. So off idle is anything not on idle. So, all right, so we have to create some sort of idle circuit over here to make this thing actually work at idle. Well, the way we're gonna do that is we have to create a whole nother system here that's going to be completely independent of what we've got going on here. Let's see if I can draw one out here. So what I could do is I could tap in off of this because I got fuel coming out through here. And yes, I do have, I'm sorry, you can, I got a, I do have, if you remember, this is called the main metering jet. So I do have the main metering jet. I have another one here, but we only need one. So main metering jet, but the main metering jet is really designed to limit the maximum amount of fuel I can get at wide open throttle, maximum RPM. So this is in, re in respects to trying to run this at idle, this is a gigantic hole for idle. So I have way more fuel than I need for just idle. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna create a whole nother system. So I can just bring it off over here. Bring it off over here. I just gotta make a, hey, that, that went straight. That was really cool. Um, all right, so, and it's gonna go around that. So I can bring it up here. And uh, like this, Oops. artist at work here, and that got really difficult. Okay, um, now I'll make it go up a little bit taller. All right, so there, and I could drill a little passage right there, and maybe I'll put another one right here. All right, so now this should be blue. Is it blue sparkles? All right. So I've got fuel. So when I now when we try and start this thing up, 
mind you, fuel is going to find its own level. It's just going to be sitting right here, right? Because that's just where fuel is going to be sitting. And it's coming out of here. And when I start this up, what is above this throttle plate is a tremendous amount of suction. Again, because the engine pistons are really, pu they're pulling back. They're trying to draw all their air in. And I've got it blocked. And because I've got it blocked, uh, this up here above the throttle plate is a lot of vacuum. In fact, I, uh, you guys are going to run some different carburetors on the ground power unit. And I had one student, I don't remember, it was, it was somewhat recently, said, well, you know, what happens if I put my hand over the bottom of the carburetor? So basically over right here. And I said, I don't know. I've never tried it. You should try it. It scared him so bad. Uh, he couldn't get his hand off. It, it, it tried to suck his hand up in the engine. And it was, he was like starting to panic, trying to get it off. Well, uh, you know, thankfully the engine died because it completely starved it for fuel and air and he was able to get his hand off, but it is a lot of suction on there. It will suck your hand right up in there. So we've got this thing here with a whole bunch of suction up here. So all I have to do is drill a little passage right here and it's going to draw the fuel right up through here and right out that little passage and up into here. So now I've got, Idle fuel, so that's my idle circuit. Well, the thing about the idle circuit too is just like anything else, you can't just have a pipe running around in there. You gotta think it through and you also have to, so you have to have um, an idle jet. Now that idle jet would probably be over here somewhere. And so I would make it small here or limit the size of the holes right here, make these precision holes right here. So you gotta have to have a precision jet here or precision jet there. But anyway, so now we can get some, um, some fuel coming out here. But an astute person might notice that, oh, wait a minute, what's different about the fuel here and the fuel over here? Well, this fuel here has got yellow in it. I can't see the cursor, I don't know. If oh know. yeah, I forget. So um, I'll have to find a different thing. So we have, what is different from the fuel here than the fuel over here? Aerated? This fuel is aerated, this fuel is not. Well, things, we still need the same thing. Nothing's changed. So we somehow have to find a way to aerate this fuel. So um, we did, sorry, we did find a way to put our little jet in there, but we need to aerate it. Well, there's something interesting going on over here in that I did create another passage right here. And this is ambient pass air right here. So right now I made a little air bleed. It's gonna help out that right there. Um, also, um, well, we'll just use that one for now. There's systems whereby you can have a little bit more, uh, you have another air bleed coming in through over here too. Oops, I forget, air bleed helping out down in here. but. I, having a hard time drawing it with what I got going on. Um, it would be, let me think, how would I do this? You are just, those the two holes that were in the Marvel? Yes, shape? they are actually. Oh. All right, so those are the two holes. Now, uh, I'll just say that you can, you can put a little hole right here. It's gonna let it fuel come up, air, air into here too. So you make a little air bleed right here, it's gonna come up and that'll kind of work. All right, so, um, hey, yeah. What is stopping the fuel from going in that first hole? Is it just the pressure differential? That's correct. There's no suction right here. So this is kind of a higher pressure area. Um, I kind of, I wish I would have drawn this just a little bit different. So I had to, didn't think it through quite right. Uh, let me just change this just a little bit. Because it works a lot better if I draw it. Um, kind of going this way. Can I move this? Oh, yay, I had some room. Okay, so um, more like this. There we go. That works better. Okay, so that means that this, this area here is high, there we go, high pressure. This is the low pressure, so it's going to suck the fuel out of right here. There we go. Suck the fuel out to there. And the air, air is yellow. Air is gonna come right through here. 
as well. And that's what's helping the engine run. So that's the engine air coming through. And we've got the little bubbles coming through this way. And so there we go. We've got air and we've got fuel getting around and the engine's gonna run and idle quite nicely with that. But here's the thing. This is a very tiny little hole and it was designed for maybe 500 RPM. Well, as I start to open this throttle valve, there's still not enough air to make this work, but I start letting a little bit more air in than this little tiny drilled hole can handle. So I gotta be able to handle that. So how am I gonna do that? I'm gonna give it a little more air. So let me do this. And if I open my throttle up just a little bit more, Now I'm letting more air come through around the sides and I need more fuel. So what happens here is instead of this being air, this becomes fuel now because it's on the suction side of the throttle plate. This is, this is the throttle plate right here. So now it's all the suction is here. Before it wasn't, before this one was down here and now this, this is in the suction. So that adds twice as much fuel. And we have our air bleed down below, down in here, that's letting air come up through here. So that's got a little bit of air, that's got a little bit of air. And we got the air coming around the throttle plate. And now we've actually got a workable idle system. And depending on how big the engine is, I may even add a third exit port right down here. And the thing about these little exit ports, let's see here. Can I be really tricky? Kind of. is that the way they're designed is that whenever they're in line with the throttle plate, whenever they're perfectly aligned with the throttle plate, that's when they open up for fuel to go because the, the air that is going through here, sorry, the air that is going through here, as it goes through here, this creates a little venturi. The air's gotta really speed up to go through here, which means there's gonna be a very low pressure right there which means every time I do that, it becomes a suction. And I'll make a fourth hole, even though I don't know of any fourth holes. So anything down here below the throttle plate, anything down that's below the throttle plate, this is a high pressure area, comparatively speaking. And so it's gonna draw fuel, sorry, air into that little hole and it's gonna go up until such time the throttle plate opens up and it aims at this one it switches over and now becomes a fuel discharge so it starts out um, you can say air 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 fuel then it opens up then you got air air fuel fuel then it opens a little bit more and you got air fuel 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 and then it opens up more and you got four fuels no air air is coming in from the little bleed over here and then what eventually happens can I clean this up at all? I don't know, that doesn't work that way. What eventually happens is the throttle plate, throttle plate opens up enough that none of these work anymore because this starts working and there's not enough of a suction actually, sorry, there's, these don't work anymore because there's not enough suction differential. This starts working and this just dies off and does nothing. So your idle circuit dies and then the, the um, main discharge nozzle works. So that's a transition phase. And, and so there's gonna be a little bit of time where you might get a little bit out of here and a little bit out of here, that's, that's transition. Then it goes to this and I call that the off idle circuit. So you got idle circuit and the off idle. So when does that happen? Oh, depends on the setup. About, what I'm trying to figure out, what did I put my notes? It's about 1200 RPM. I wrote that in the but it's about 1200 RPM, which I do have an interesting thing. I don't know if this will actually work, but now's a good time to find out. Let me see. There we go. Just curious if this would work. This is supposed to be a video. You tell me, can you see it and hear it? It for a second, but we can see it.
Are you guys able to see that? Yeah, yeah. we can see it. Yeah. Can you hear it? <laughs> we cannot hear it. Oh, that's too bad, because it, it, it gives you the engine RPM, and you can kind of hear what's going on. I'm sure there's a setting that I have to set to do that. Um, but, but what you can see is, I don't know, maybe I can do still shots, that, um, let's see. Oh, there were some settings here. Let me see. Well, I won't worry about it. But anyway, you can see at, at this point right here that fuel is actually coming out of the discharge nozzle. And so the whole time that the engine's actually running, but here you can see it start to come out of the discharge nozzle. Before that, you could not see it at all. I mean, it's running right here. And you can hear it running and it's running at a couple hundred RPM, uh, five, six, seven, eight hundred RPM, but you cannot see any fuel coming out of this, this uh, main discharge nozzle, which is right here, because it's coming out of the little tiny nozzles that are up here, the idle nozzles, like I showed you earlier. So, all right, now I just got to figure out how to make that. Um, I think there was some sort of button I had to check somewhere. I don't know. Screen capture. Screen, oh, screen capture sound. It's right now. You hear that? Yeah. Awesome. So there you can see it and hear it going through the transition phase from the idle to the off idle back to the idle. And so that's what we've got going on there. So let me think. You here. can re really hear the suction. Oh, can you? <laughs> well, there's that. That's actually our ground power unit that you guys are going to be using. And it's, I believe it's an O200 based model. It's a Continental O200. Uh, but it is designed to be a ground power unit. And instead of having a propeller, it has a flywheel that is probably four feet in diameter that moves quite a bit of air. And so it's a very noisy apparatus. So, all right, so back to this. Let's see, we'll go over here. Let's talk about our idle circuit. Um, idle circuit. No, not idle circuit. Before we get there, we talked about a throttle plate. Throttle plate. All right, so it's a butterfly type valve is what they call it, butterfly. Sounds cooler than it is. Type valve. All right, butterfly type valve. Um, we'll talk about the closed position. P-O-S-I-T-I-O in -I -I closed position. All right, closed position. What about the closed position? Well, during the closed position, it restricts, restricts air and fuel uh, entering the engine. Entering the engine. Oh, uh, that is the go slow, go sl uh, slow position. <clears throat> go slow position. I'm going to back up one dot here. Inside of a, a lot of aircrafts, especially anything with a constant speed propeller, if it doesn't have a constant speed, it probably isn't going to have this, but I'm going to put it up here. It's going to have a gauge. And that's why. There. And that's going to be a, often called a map gauge for manifold absolute pressure. And that is the pressure inside of the manifold, the intake manifold. Now, when this engine is off, when you think about the engine is off, so I've got air 
I've got air that is outside of the aircraft and that's air, <coughs> excuse me, maybe I shouldn't have peanuts every time I break, I get the peanut dust. All right, so the engine is off. It's not running, it's sitting there on the ramp. We have outside here, we have air pressure. And what is the standard day air pressure? 29.92. Right, 29.92. Well, it's whatever, and that's standard day, but it's gonna be whatever it is. And we'll just say it's a standard day. So outside of here, I've got 29.92 inches. And I would love to find the setting that makes it not do that with the dark. But anyway, so then what does that mean my pressure is inside of this throttle throat area right here? 29.92. What is it over here? 29.92. So what is it here? 29.92. What is it inside the cylinders? 29.92. So when the engine is off, this should say whatever it is outside. 29.92. All right, but when I start this engine up and I've got it running and I've got it in idle, and I've got it in idle, that means that this valve is gonna be pretty dang closed. All right, what is going to be the pressure in here? Is the pressure going to go up or is it going to go down? Can't yeah, see what's your point now. Down. Down. All right, it's going to go down. It is going to be a significant vacuum. Well, yeah, that just doesn't work to, to write. Hit here. the ink to shape under right under the review tab. Thank you. That one? I think so. It's just, oh, ink editor? I want it to just turn off. I don't know. Maybe it's off now. All right. Jeez. And I got my keyboard way over here. Delete. All right. So it's going to be, let's try it out. See, you vacuum. So it's going to be a significant vacuum. So it's not going to be 29.92 anymore. It's going to be really low. And I don't have those numbers. Harry, what, what, do you, what is that number on your plane? It's like uh, 14. What's that? Uh, at idle, what do you get from manifold pressure? About 14 inches? Oh, you know, I, I can't recall uh, what it is. It's low like that, though. Yeah, it's going to be really low. We'll, just, we'll make up some numbers. It's going to be like 14 inches of mercury. 14 inches at an idle. And all right, so I guess I can make a couple points here. One, it's always a good idea when you get into your aircraft, uh, if you wanna check your gauges. This, if it's off, your manifold pressure gauge should read the same as your altimeter. So if you set the altimeter for field elevation, it's gonna have in the little Colesman window, it's called a cell, the pressure is 29.92. Then this better say 29.92. So right now with this, closed and the engine running uh, with this this closed and the engine running there's going to be a tremendous vacuum here and if we had a vacuum gauge it would make more sense to you but it's not a vacuum gauge it is a pressure gauge so you just have to know when it goes below 29.92 or whatever it is outside that becomes a vacuum so it's it's under a vacuum now the more i open up the throttle valve the more this pressure is going to go up why because I'm solving the need for air. The pistons are trying to get air and they can't, so it makes a vacuum up here. Open up the throttle plate and I've, I've, I'm satisfying its, its thirst for air. And so this pressure, 14, is gonna go up and up and up until at some point, at some point, I'm gonna have the throttle wide open wide open, and if it's 29.92 outside, what is going to be my pressure gauge in my engine now? Looking for a guess. 35. 30, okay. Well, this is a non-turbocharged engine, so it's About never going to go higher than what, what we started with. So roughly we had about, I'm always going to start from here on out, I'm going to say 30 inches. So I if outside is 30 inches, we're probably going to see 29 inches. You're always going to see about a one inch drop. So if outside is 30, 29.92, and I'm going to round to 30 from here on out. So if outside is 30, the best case scenario is going to be 29 inches uh, on the ground. Why is that? Well, two reasons. One, I've got a restriction. I've got a restriction called the Venturi. So if I've got a restriction, 
I can't get 30. I have one other restriction inside of this thing, and that's down here. The air filter? You got it. I got, a, I got an air filter. And that adds a restriction as well. So between the, between the air filter and my Venturi restriction, I'll always have about a one inch drop through the carburetor, just so you know. Now, I'm gonna get a little of that back once we start flying, because the, this, this uh, air filter, they're actually placed behind the propeller for a reason. The propeller forces air inside of here, like a little turbocharger, if you will, it, it adds a little bit. And also the aircraft moving forward is what we call ram air coming in. So you got the ram air and the propeller air, so that's gonna help out. All right, so closed position restricts fuel um, and restricts air and fuel entering the engine, that's to go slow. And then uh, open position. Open position is um, that would be max air, max fuel air mix equals go fast. And of course, you have all of those ranges in between, as we talked about. You've got the off, you have the idle, then you have the transition phase where you could have both the idle circuit and the off idle working or the main discharge circuit. And then you'll get to a point where you have just the main discharge. So let's talk about our idle circuit that we drew. All right, so I say, what are the two circuits? You'll always say the idle circuit and the off idle, or you could say the idle and the main discharge circuit, that would work. So, so when the throttle is closed, when the throttle, is closed and everybody should know that the throttle is the butterfly valve and it is controlled by the black knob inside of the cockpit. In a car, it is your right foot. Idle position, all right, so there we go, idle position. So when the throttle is closed, idle position, very little air, very little. Very little air is flowing and the Venturi is ineffective. Very little air is flowing. And the Venturi is ineffective. F, F. Ineffective. Thus, the need for an idle circuit. All right. So when the throttle plate is closed, when the throttle plate is closed, the displacement of the engine, the displacement, DI, the displacement of the engine running out of room. So hopefully you guys are caught up there. I'm going to scroll up a little bit and I'll, I'll watch the, the notes there. All right. Um, the, displacement of the, the displacement of the engine or pistons, if you will. Um, yeah, just, we'll put pistons. You can put whatever you like. Creates a low pressure. Creates a low pressure. Well, I would actually call it a vacuum. It's just that real scientific minded people would argue that it's not a vacuum, it's a lower pressure, but I will say, well, it's less than outside, therefore it's a vacuum. All right, so it creates low pressure vacuum in in the manifold system, in the intake manifold. And again, the intake manifold is everything from the throttle plate up to the cylinders. Now, later on, we're gonna add another component uh, when we get into turbochargers, which will be the upper deck pressure. But for right now, uh, the intake manifold for us goes all the way from the throttle valve to the cylinders. 
when you have a turbocharger, it's going to go from the throttle valve, sorry, Zeus made a weird noise, throttle valve uh, to the turbocharger. And then turbocharger to the cylinders is going to be upper deck pressure. So, so there's no throttle body? Uh, there is. There's always going to be a throttle, throttle valve. Always a throttle valve. Not always a Venturi, you're going to find out. Uh, one system found a way to do it without a Venturi, and it's really cool. So um, we use we use this vacuum to draw out fuel to draw out fuel from orifices from orifices above the throttle plate. I just want to, and I, oops, eh, whatever, that can be two, who cares? All right, um, some carburetors, some carbs, some carbs utilize, and I, I talked to you about this, um, where the carburetor throttle, the, the throttle plate is aimed directly at one of those holes, and the air moves very fast between the carburetor plate and that hole, which creates a Venturi effect. So some carburetors utilize, use, use the air flowing, air flowing past, past the throttle plate, throttle plate, uh, I'll put throttle plate sides, sides to create a Venturi effect to pull out fuel from the little discharge tube there. Um, what do you care about, Janet? Janet says, I care. And I was just wondering what she cares about. Um, let's see what we got. Oh, you care about my ordering system. Well, then this was supposed to be, um, that nah, doesn't matter. I'm on D part five. I don't know, whatever. Sorry. <laughs> I think I just probably broke Janet with that IV system contains. Um, system contains. What does it contain? What is my idle system? So I could put this right here. Idle system contains. Uh, it contains. It contains one. The idle discharge nozzle. Idle discharge nozzles. And the idle discharge nozzles are really just those holes drilled into the side of the uh, the throttle body, the side of the carburetor. Um, so we could put that. May. Not only are maybe, but they almost really are, may be just drilled passages. Maybe just drilled passages. Um, maybe several passages. Maybe several. Just like I drew. Where we ended up with four different passages. Um, so some, um, some, uh, actually I should put when, let me, let me change that because otherwise we're like, what, what is he talking about? How about this? When the throttle is closed, that's fully closed, um, I want to put some some holes are above the throttle plate and some are below and you remember some are above because we want just one or two of those little holes to be feeding fuel when the fuel valve is closed 
and then as the throttle valve. And so as the throttle valve opens, we want to see, we need more fuel to come. So we're gonna open up some more of those holes. No, no I'll put that so to um, as throttle is opened, more holes are exposed. More holes are exposed, uh, which adds more fuel. Adding more fuel. All right, and then I'll make this point. Uncovered passages uncovered passages and that's those below the throttle valve so the ones that are below the throttle valve um, that aren't allowing fuel to come out may be used may be used as additional air bleeds and we also had an idle metering jet built into this system because, well, we still have to regulate the fuel, right? I'll put that, um, let's see, you still, because you still need to regulate the fuel. Just because it's an idle doesn't mean you can't have an idle jet. See, it's a calibrated orifice that is going to regulate the idle fuel. If you use that uh, engine, use that carburetor, bigger engine, then you have to rejet it. Well, all right. I guess it is about that time because from here on out, I've got a, kind of another component that we're going to add to the system. So I'm going to leave that right there. And I know you guys are still writing. And I suppose that if I end the thing, it kicks you off and you can't write that stuff. And that would not be very nice. So I'm going to scroll this down as far as it will go in case you missed anything and let you guys take a minute to do that. But I can stop the recording, right?